Coming up, people living in West Fargo may soon be voting on a proposed sales tax increase. How and why the mayor is pushing for it. A controversial corn milling plant proposed for Grand Forks is clearing another hurdle. And targeting marijuana use, how North Dakota state troopers are looking for drivers under the influence. Hello and welcome to the Nightly Review. I'm Tom Tucker. We begin with a look at tonight's headlines, then a closer look with comments tonight from Fargo Police Chief Dave Zabolski talking about the arrest of a suspect wanted in connection with burglaries at more than 30 area businesses. And in tonight's one on one, my guest is Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison talking about the investigation into the popular social media app TikTok. He's also commenting on complaints his office has received regarding alleged sexual harassment within the Minnesota Vikings organization. But first tonight, West Fargo Mayor Bernie Dardis wants to raise the city's sales tax another half cent to help pay for police and fire services. Dardis has proposed placing the half cent sales tax increase on the November ballot. If approved by voters, the sales tax rate would be the highest in the metro area. Meanwhile, West Fargo Police Chief Dennis Otterness is reporting an overall decrease in the city's crime rate of 8% last year. He presented the annual crime report to the City Council Monday night. The overall rate includes a 10% drop in property crimes, but a slight uptick in reported crimes against persons. A new fire station may soon be coming to South Fargo. The Fargo City Commission voted unanimously to sell $8.1 million in bonds to build and supply the new station with new fire trucks and equipment. The station will be built along 64th Avenue South. A local veterans group is calling for the Cass County Commission to include a new indoor shelter for their plans for the Fargo National Cemetery. Currently, veterans who serve at the cemetery during burials have to wait in their own vehicles between ceremonies, even in bitter cold temperatures. Cemetery officials say they're waiting on more than $2 million in donations to come in before they build such a facility. City Council leaders in Grand Forks have passed a series of planning and zoning changes that clear the way for the arrival of a major new corn milling plant in the city. The decisions are not final, but provide a show of support for plans by the Fufang Group, a Chinese-owned company behind the project. Some citizens have raised security concerns over the company's alleged ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Mayor Brandon Bochensky says the plant will bring jobs and tax revenues to the city. Fargo Police Chief Dave Zabolski is drawing attention to the work of his officers in tracking down and arresting Shelby Witt, a suspect accused of committing several burglaries around the FM Metro. The suspect was arrested after crashing his car early in the morning on December 28th. Officer Linstead, through the snow, minus 30, chases this guy not only through the snow into a yard, through a house, out the other side of the house, and into the front yard where he's captured with assistance of other officers. After he's placed in custody, we go back to the vehicle and we can discover that because the intelligence was passed out to the officers, they look in the vehicle and identify uh, burglarious tools and, and things that look to be connected to this burglary crew. Chief Zabolski says Witt's burglaries caused more than $100,000 in losses for area businesses. The chief says Witt has pleaded guilty to 32 burglary-related charges. Some of the burglaries happened in Horace and Castleton. The North Dakota Highway Patrol has released the name of the man who died in a snowmobiling accident in Harvey. Bradley Patzer was test riding a Yamaha Mountain Max snowmobile when he hit a berm of packed snow and ice, causing Patzer to be thrown from the snowmobile. He was taken to a local hospital where he was later pronounced dead. The North Dakota Highway Patrol also asking drivers to be vigilant in reporting drug use on state highways. Beginning this week, the Highway Patrol is stepping up their enforcement across the state, targeting drivers suspected of using marijuana while behind the wheel. The enhanced enforcement will continue throughout most of the week. The Ward County Sheriff's Department is donating more than 40 sets of Kevlar vests to be used by soldiers and citizens in Ukraine during their military conflict with Russia. Many of the vests have been sitting in the department storage area for years because the expiration dates for the manufacturer's guarantee have already passed. And the avian flu is now impacting Minnesota raptors. In the last three weeks, the University of Minnesota Raptor Center has found 23 positive cases in bald eagles, red-tailed hawks, and great horned owls. The majority of raptors testing positive at the center have not survived the flu. 
In a closer look tonight, U.S. Senator John Hoban is in Del Rio, Texas, bringing attention to what he describes as a big concern when it comes to the number of illegal immigrants flowing into the country. Hoban is calling on the Biden administration to take steps aimed at securing the border. Last month, as you saw, there are 165,000 uh, encounters with uh, illegals coming across for the month of February. Of that, 33,000 were in the Rio Grande Valley. And I've been over to McAllen there. I was there with 16 other senators call calling attention to this problem. But in the last month, there were 33,000 in the Rio Grande Valley, 30,000 in Del Rio, and Del Rio is coming up. And Del Rio had more what they call gotaways, which is not included in that encounter's number. Last month alone, immigration authorities stopped migrants more than 221,000 times along the southwest border. That's an increase of 33 percent compared to February, according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Hoven also talked about the work of North Dakota National Guard troops now stationed at the border. We've got our great guardsmen down here. We've got CBP. We've got Border Patrol. These people are tremendous people doing a tremendous job. But if, if the administration will not enforce the public health order, the remain in Mexico policy, and the third safe country. That's how the Trump administration shut this thing down. That's what needs to happen now. That's what we have to continue to push for. Senator Hoven said he and others in the Senate are pushing the Biden administration to provide information on where illegal immigrants are being transported around the country. Hoven made the comments this morning while appearing on What's on Your Mind on AIM 1100, the flag. And at a quick programming note tonight, I have a request. If you enjoy the nightly review and find it informative when it comes to news and happenings in the FM area and beyond, please click the subscribe button below and ring the bell. That way you won't miss the next report. And time now for a check of what's happening weather-wise. Meteorologist Justin Storm has the update from the Skywatch Weather Center. Thanks, Tom. We'll see mostly cloudy conditions continuing throughout this evening with wind out of the southeast around 15 to 30 miles per hour. Tonight remains cloudy with a low near 34 and we'll see a wintry mix of rain snow combination push across eastern North Dakota early Wednesday morning to late morning. Likely snow in the northern valley and scattered rain through the southern valley that then exits the area leaving Wednesday afternoon mostly cloudy to partly sunny with highs in the upper 40s and west wind around 10 to 25. Lighter wind for your Thursday. The sun pops back out. We'll see highs again in the mid and upper 40s. It could happen to you or someone you love. One moment, one diagnosis can change everything. Thankfully, there's a program that helps caring people uplift families through a crisis. Lend a hand up raising financial help and hope through community benefits and online campaigns. A program that boosts generosity so gifts go further. Lend a Hand Up helps you help your neighbors. Learn more and give at lendahandup.org. Welcome back to the Nightly Review. In tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation, my guest is Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison. He's talking about his efforts aimed at reducing crime in Minnesota. I first asked him about his involvement with attorneys general from other states investigating the popular social media app TikTok for alleged harmful practices aimed at children using the app. We are continuing to uh, get documents to identify witnesses uh, and to investigate. Uh, at this point, you know, it would be premature to announce charges. Those would be based on our investigation. But we are concerned, concerned that some of the messages that young people are getting uh, are affecting their health, their safety, uh, are creating tensions and anxieties with young people that are driving them to do some things that may not be healthy and good for their health. We want to see parents in greater control and have more access to make sure that their kids are only uh, getting the information that those parents deem to be good and healthy for those uh, young people. And it's, it's quite a concern. We know that, you know, TikTok is, uh, you know, needs to tighten up its act. We hope they do it voluntary. If they don't, uh, we will have to do it uh, as a state AGs. In recent days, you've commented on complaints that your office has received alleging sexual harassment within the Minnesota Vikings organization. What can you tell us about those complaints and how is your office responding? Th this matter is too premature for me to began to make any kind of uh, allegations. What I'll say is that there have been a number of complaints that have caught our attention. 
we want to make sure the NFL deals with these things on their own. We think this is probably the place to start. But if we continue to get complaints, uh, we will investigate. The letter that we sent to them was simply saying, these complaints have come to our attention and we need you to take them seriously. Uh, and uh, you know that's, that is the, the gist of that action. At this point, we haven't even launched an investigation. We've received some complaints that we're concerned about that we brought to their attention, urging them to make sure that they take good care to protect everyone in their organization, especially uh, women who have uh, made these complaints. You've also expressed concerns in recent days regarding hiring practices in the NFL, specifically coaching hires as related to race. You haven't announced any action on this issue, but it appears to have your attention. Well, this continues to be an issue. We've got to make sure that in our society, everybody has a fair shot. And these, so these are legitimate, fair things to ask. I mean, the attorney generals uh, in our country often do uh, represent state entities that do, uh, uh, you know, human rights and non-discrimination. So these are these continue to be things that uh, are, are of concern to us. We're, we're all, we all want a fair society where everybody has an equal opportunity. And I'd like to thank Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison for joining me for tonight's one on one conversation. One of Ellison's Republican challengers in the election right now blames Ellison for the property damage in Minneapolis during the riots following the death of George Floyd. You'll hear Ellison's response to that tomorrow night in part two of my conversation with the Attorney General. Well, that will do it for this Tuesday night, April 19th, 2022. I'm Tom Tucker. Thanks for watching the Nightly Review.